Hi, welcome back to eLiterate TV. I'm Phil Hill. And today we're here with uh, Jonathan Reese from Colorado State University at Pueblo. So thank you for being with us. So one of the things I'm interested in, you're, you're in the field of history. Mm -hmm. How have you gotten into the whole world of educational technology and then therefore into what MOOCs are and are not? There's a, a lot of educational technology that's being done in history. And I got into it because I was interested in doing it in my own classroom. But I've developed some concerns based primarily, I think, on my, my work with the Colorado AAUP. I'm worried about uh, what it's going to be like for other historians who come after me, mm -hmm. whether they can get employment and what their classrooms are going to be like. At one point, someone from my university asked me if I wanted to teach online. I didn't know much about it. And it sort of disturbed me because it seemed as if the standards weren't nearly as good as they should be. And I started blogging about it because I wanted people to, people, other faculty like me <laughs> to know what was going on. And I'm, I'm, so I've been trying to raise awareness for some time now. Well, just within that field is a teaching online in general. Yeah. So what have you learned already as far as what you think does work and doesn't work within your field? I, I had to be broad, I think, otherwise this would take an hour. But if you have a lot of technical knowledge or you're willing to learn it, and there's a lot of money available to you, you can teach online history really well and learn fantastic stuff. I teach fantastic stuff, but if there's uh, an environment where you don't have a lot of money and people are trying to do it on the cheap, then there's gonna be real serious, both historical and pedag pedagogical problems with what you're creating. Sure. And my, my problem with MOOCs, not all MOOCs, but certainly the way that MOOCs were originally pitched as these great cost savers is that it seemed like the bad side of online education all over again to me. And so I've been trying to learn about it and telling others so that we can uh, turn the bad online education into the good online education. Sure. And so it almost sounds like you're sort of self-taught, like it's out of a general I'm interest. I'm completely in self-taught. Yeah, I never expected to be doing this, but I just figured, why not me? Sure. So I've, I've been writing about it for some time now. So, so tell me a little bit, when we talk about um, sort of the bad side of mm. education, or, you know, let's talk a little bit about what does that mean? What are the things that we want to avoid? I think what you really want to avoid, and I think this certainly goes beyond history, you want to avoid an automated education where the idea of a college education is to look at something on the screen and then they will do all your teaching for you. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of value to close contact with a professor. You can have that close contact online if your class isn't too big. You can't have that with 30,000 people. The kinds of things that historians do, good history professors do, cannot be done with 30,000 people or 80,000 people, or really, just to be fair, even four or 500 people. Okay. Um, you want to be able to you know, look at people's writing. You want to be able to critique it as somebody who writes yourself. Uh, you want to be able to have conversations in order to get students to get to their own opinions about history rather than saying, you know, here's a video of the Kennedy assassination, go watch it, mm. and poof, you learned about the Kennedy assassination. The problem would be if we sort of blindly apply scaling technologies yeah. to automate um, teaching, if you will, yeah. and lose the direct connection of faculty with a small number of students in some way. That's really what would be the danger. I think it's particularly important with history because everybody thinks, because the, you tended to have bad high school teachers, that history is all about content. If you can date the Kennedy assassination, you know history. If you can date World War II, you know history. But that's only the building blocks of history. History is not just knowing when things happened, it's knowing what to do with that information and how that's gonna inform your world. And sort of direct guidance from a professor is what makes that kind of teaching possible. English is sort of the same way, except instead of historical facts, you're dealing with literature. And writing, the writing skills in both disciplines are exactly the same. So while you know, MOOCs may work, I won't even concede this because I know nothing about computer science, but they may work in a computer science environment where all you need to do is code. I'm really suspicious of the idea of applying them mindlessly to the humanities sure. and probably a few other disciplines I don't know that much about. Sure. Now let's look at the opposite side of that because as I understand, you're certainly not a Luddite. You actually yeah. do explore technology and where it applies in the oh, classroom. Oh, absolutely. So where yeah. would um, some of the online technology and MOOC-specific technology, where does it apply, if anywhere? I have sort of a professor-centered vision of educational technology. I think the best thing 
that educational technology providers could do would be to offer a buffet. Here's this tool, here's this tool, here's this tool. Uh -huh. And you can have the ones you like, and yeah. you will just ignore the ones that you don't like. Yeah. And so, for instance, um, I have a wiki in one of my classes. Uh, I have blogs in a few of my classes, and I love this stuff. It allows me to teach complicated history differently. I wrote an article about teaching history with YouTube. That was five years ago. Um, and so I you know, and break up my lectures with foam. Yeah. And these are great things to me. They match the way I teach. I'm glad to be able to do it. And I try to tell others so that if they want to take it, they'll take it as a tool they can use too. But if you simply say, here's your MOOC, this is the way this course will be taught forever, um, then I think that's a problem. Gotcha. I worry about the academic freedom of the professors who are being asked to flip their classes with other people's MOOCs. I worry about shared governance on campuses where uh, provosts and presidents are getting probably a little too interested in sure. education technology. And I'm really here to sort of voice those concerns so that the people who are trying to plan our educational technology future take them into account. Sure. And let's pick up on that. I mean, it's interesting that you've been a well-known critic of uh, MOOCs or the current implementation of MOOCs, yeah. if you will, through your writing or your mm. blog site and elsewhere. But you're here at the conference that's all about MOOCs and yeah. doing research on data. So tell me your view. What, what are you hoping to get out of this conference? Well, I mean, first, I need to learn this stuff. Um, if you, you can't tell other people about it if I don't know what's going on. I need to know that it's a little bit of its, you know, its own culture. I need to know the terms. I need to know the, the issues. So I've been doing a lot of listening. And then I've also been trying to sort of, it sounds a little pretentious, but represent the people who aren't here. Uh -huh. You know, these are the concerns that the people who are resisting edu education technology have. They're the ones I've been writing about. They're the ones that have been getting the most positive feedback. You know, how are you going to take them into account going forward? Sure. So that's actually, uh, that's a very good voice to have in yeah. a conference like this. To no, keep all, it all credit goes to George Siemens for inviting me. No, no question about that. There were a lot of people who are doing this sort of thing wouldn't want a critic at the table. And I'm glad to be at least, I'm sure there are others somewhere, but <laughs> at least the only one I know of at the moment who's here. And a quick question for you. What have you heard so far? I know we're just one day into the workshop, but what have you learned so far? Um, I think the thing that I've learned that's most obvious is that a lot of the people who are proponents of this technology share the exact same concerns that I do. Okay. I mean, maybe our priorities are a little different, like they're more interested in new than they are in you know, the shared governance on particular university campuses, but they, they hear what I've been saying, and I think the, I have hope that they'll take that into account moving forward. Good. Well, thank you very much. It's been uh, great to hear from Jonathan Rees here at the conference, and uh, thank you for joining us. Oh, no problem.